This is Bubba coming at you. So, let's do something today. A little different. Let's uh, look at this TMA we got. We're not going to down it. We're not going to up it. You, you decide if you'd want one or not. Okay? They say, uh, let's say, don't, don't fix it if it ain't broke. Well, let's see what this here uh, does. I can tell you this, though. Us in the maintenance department is going to miss our henos, okay? I can leave that at that, okay? So let's uh, let's check this one out and uh, see what you think about it. We'll go from there. Before we start, Lester. Not sure about him. But anyway, I, I came along with me. He's good help. He's got some learning to do, you know, and he does a little bit of my uh, inside jokes, I guess you'd say. But anyway, don't worry about what he's doing in this video. He know what he's doing. He's getting it done. A lot of help. He is part of the wolf pack. There's only three of us now. <clears throat> it's hard to join the wolf pack. Uh, but anyway, check him out in it. See what you think. Well, here we are. Let's talk about this new uh, TMA we decided to go with. Freightliner. So, it's that what? B67? So your fuel filter is easy to get to. Problem is, it does rub that pipe back there behind it. Um, you're going to have to Got to be straight when you go in there or move that pipe somehow. It's a pain, but it can be done. Of course, you got your other filter out here. These are simple. Y'all can, y'all know what them are. So, uh, your fuel filter on it, a little different. Totally different package. Uh, we found that the uh, rear seals are seeping on some of these. We got 30. I think a few of them are leaking underneath, coming out of the bell housing. But anyway. Is that bell housing leaking? We were talking about <clears throat> the rear seal or something. And uh, let's see if this is how wet this is. You know, I have my gloves on, so I do the video. It's hard to do that with my phone. But uh, anyway, we have a bunch of them that has that right there. Some of them are wet, actually. But anyway, that's another thing we're checking into, trying to find out what's going on. Let's go around this other side here, look at this oil filter. So you got a total different air filter, but let's find the oil filter on it. She is back there with that white tag. I think you can see it. I'm trying to get me to see it. Uh, you can see it now, I think. But anyway, that's where that oil filter is. So you either remove the air filter, your boot off the air filter, get your boot off the turbo. You're gonna take off the turbo and your air filter by removing, you take them four bolts off. There's four right here. Take them out of your way. You can get all this out of the way to get to the filter. Put the air filter out. See the oil filter a little better. Get to it a little easier. Now, the other option I come up with is these oil filter tools. Check these out, and we're going to use a uh, gear wrench this morning. We're going to try it out first, and if it don't succeed, we're going to go with you know one of the other two until we do get the oil filter off. All right, start off with this one here that gets this oil filter done is the uh, service service tool, service vehicle tool. Okay. With this one hand, if it's fine, and this one can go reverse either way. So you can tighten one or loosen it. 
if you want to tighten one of these, I don't recommend it. The other one is this uh, tool whiz. Tool whiz has got some rubbers on it. If you don't want to, it's only removed, so uh, you don't want to scratch your filter taking it off. And of course, we got this in here. Yes, I bought another gear wrench tool. It only removes, so it can't snug it back up. Okay? But anyway, let's uh, get these filters changed. If not, you gotta take all that mess off to get to it. We're gonna try this out and see what happens. Get this filter on there. I mean, it's a tight spot, and if the truck's not clean, when you go back in there with your filter, you are gonna get dirt in it. But you cap it somehow, rag or something that don't have a lint, get you a grabbing tool so you can reach in there and get it and get it off of there, then go back underneath the truck, put your filter on. But anyway, let's carry on and get this done. But I know a lot of y'all been waiting to see the the Freightliner TMA. Here she is. Same truck, you know. So same kind of truck, just different, different cab and drivetrain on it. But let's uh Let's see what we got. To get an oil sample, we're gonna see if there's a port somewhere we can put one of the cap plugs so we get an oil sample out of it. If not, you're gonna have to drain the oil and catch it. That ain't the correct way to do it. Uh, I'm not supposed to do it that way. But the test tube, the, the pull tube for the samples test tube, the pull tube that got, got us here, I have done everything with this I could. I have smashed it, cut it in an arrow, cut it in two arrows, both sides. I've done everything. I can't get it down in a tube. It goes down and stops. Now, I'm thinking about putting a piece of uh, fish aquarium holes on the end of it. Problem is, the security so it won't come off. I guess you can super glue it on there uh, to get it down in there. I think aquarium holes are a little bit smaller. But anyway, that's for uh, your engine oil sample until we find out exactly I may be crazy, but I can't find a port on it to pull the sample, so I'm getting it as it uh, comes out. But today, we're going to do it a different way. I'm going to let Lester, he's going to do the sampling, he's going to do the oil changing. I'll, I'll do the explaining, but Lester's going to get the sample and all from her oil and let him do that mess. You know what I mean? He can, he can handle that part. Just like the other TMAs, with this engine here, I think you got a plug. I don't feel for it over here. I think there is. Let me set that light somewhere. Uh, yes, there's a plug on the side if you don't want to get everything out of the pan or go to the bottom one to get everything. The other one's up about an inch. Yeah, probably an inch or so off the bottom. You won't catch everything. Now that oil filter, that we're located at. So if the truck is dirty, you better cap that filter before you go back. Um, we still got to figure out. I hadn't done one yet to get it out the bottom. We're going to see how much trouble it is. I went out the top because I took the air filter and all that off first to get to my first machine. I didn't have that tool to try to get in there and get the filter out of there. So let's hope we can uh, lick it down out of there. If not, we'll do something different. Let's try it out. Sorry for all the background racket out there doing some blading, but so you're not gonna spill any oil when you go through that filter. You can see the dirt and everything is still on it. I sewed up with those rags there to keep them turning over. But I did use the gear wrench one first. We got a bunch of these we gotta do. I'm gonna use all three of them, see if they all three work good, and then we'll go to see how long one of them gives up. Uh, I didn't hear no pops, any, uh, a gear skipping, nothing on the gear wrench. So the gear wrench right now, hey, it's working. We'll see how long it works, how many trucks it can do. But anyway, we uh, headed back up with the new oil filter. And you can move those lines. There's a, a heater hose and something else. Move everything out towards the frame. And you can dig a hole to go in there. Uh, make sure your truck is clean. If not, you know, you're gonna get dirt in your filter. Cap it, whatever you gotta do to get it up in there. But anyway, 
We'll get this other filter on. She's uh, ready to go. Get the little project here done. We'll continue on. You can see with everything out of the way, the, this line here, you can pull all this to the side and try to go straight up with it. Um, but man, make sure your truck is clean because if you bump something, you can run your filter. So we're going to get that screwed on. Move on with it. Lester's over here getting her oil sample. Hey, Lester, what are you doing? Oh, no. Lester. That's what, you can't pour all out of a filter into the, the bottle. No, we don't do it that way. Oh, somebody told you to do it. Well, I guess that's the only way you can get oil. I guess so. Boy, 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 what we got going on today. Huh, all right. Got her on there. Hand tight, I, I switched it pretty good on it so it ain't gonna leak. But you can see how this stuff here can be in your way if you don't move it out of your way. Try to get a better video of it. It's hard to uh, probably get what you can see or need. But if you don't want to get the tool, I show my boss that tool. He's supposed to, uh, I think, get some of them, show the other guys or whatever. And I, I hope they know where the idea came from here about the tool, I hope. If not, no big deal. But anyway, um, let's move on to the fuel filter. All right, heads up on that filter. So go ahead and change your O-ring and you can put a little bit of your uh, motor oil on it. Something for the slide, because your diesel, you actually clean some, it'll stick. The O-ring will roll up on you. That's up. So go ahead and change the O-rings provided and put something on it with a slide. Get back up there, enough where you can get your plug back in and pump on it so it fills up. Or you can try to fill it up what you can before you put it on, either way. So uh, let's move on to the next fuel filter. On the fuel filters, we got this one on. Some hit that pipe, some don't. This one missed it, but the last truck, it hit it. Uh, the drag on it, so you have to either move the pipe a little bit or try to get as straight as you can to get up in there. But anyway, uh, check out one of these. If you wanna ask any questions, I'm gonna answer what I can. If not, we'll go like we are. Here's a TMA Freightliner uh, that the generators ain't cranking on. We have a bunch of them this way. But anyway, here's how to solve the problem. All right, so. When the generators don't crank on these, uh, whoever's doing them on the Freightliner TMAs, I know Scorpion puts the bed and crash pad on them. I don't know who's doing the generators, but that bottom line needs to be moved to the bottom where that plug is. Put the plug in the middle. They're not clogged tubes. So, uh, we got 30 trucks to, uh, plumb right anyway so if you have an issue with the uh generator not cranking on these tmas there you might want to look there here's a generator that's not cranking on these the freightliner tmas but this one here has been improved uh let's take a look at it over there As you can see, this here has been moved. Uh, the center will be moved to the bottom, the plug put in the center, and that's the only way they're gonna run. So all of the we've been getting, both hoses on top and middle, the generators are not gonna crank. So move the middle hose down one, and put that plug in the middle hose. And uh, the middle hole there, okay? It'll fire. Run well, okay like it's supposed to then. Anyway, just an update on these uh, generators. No dust, no starts. If you uh, go looking for the air horn, so that's the front of your truck, okay? Bear with me. The transmission. 
the drive line. There's your air horn hiding back here. It's right above the uh, tail shaft, the transmission. If you go looking for it, sorry for the lighting back that way. Anyway, there's a lot of these. Of course, in here, back behind here is your uh, cab air filter. And it's kind of the uh, same size of shape. It's like a, uh, say, a 325 excavator cap. It looks like them. I'm going to compare it when one comes in, see uh, how close it is. We ain't got one yet. We're waiting on it. What'd you think about it? <clears throat> so it's not a Hino. Uh, I feel like, you know, they say go with your gut. I do feel like we're going to have issues. Uh, we never had an issue out of the Hino's. We talk highly about them in the maintenance department. If it was me, i go back to Hino. But, hey, they never knock until you try it. You can't judge a book by the cover. Right now, we're just looking at the cover. We're uh, at our first 500 hours on them, so we're, we're still checking them out, see how good they are. We'll come back later as we go and see how well they do. <clears throat> and with all the uh, comments and uh, the likes and stuff over on the shop page about the Hino, I'm glad I helped the ones who I could. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of information out there on them. So there's going to be some information on this one. We'll bring it. Now, we have two different ones, uh, same truck, different engines. And I'll get to the other engine you know, as I do them. I'm kind of limited on time, so I'll, I'll do what I can there. But anyway... Uh, the link's going to be in below uh, where the other information is. You just go there and <clears throat> you can just search Hino. And a lot of the stuff that I've done or the, the help will pop up some, you know. And there are some videos on the page or the channel here about the Hino. But anyway, y'all, uh, thanks for watching. Let's uh, get the other truck and see what it, what it turns out to be like. Thank you.